Prior to 1917, the United States attempted to pursue a policy of isolationism, avoiding conflict with the European powers as much as possible. When America entered the war in 1917, everything changed, including life back home. One of the many things that changed was the economy. The war atmosphere created even more opportunity for business. President Woodrow Wilson thought that government intervention in the economy was necessary. His form of intervention came in the form of the War Industries Board, the WIB. This is where the dollar a year men went to DC in order to help the economy get on its feet. However, it did not have the immediate effect Wilson hoped for. The total industrial production decreased when the war first started. The stock market had a similar situation when it dropped at first, but then went back up. After the initial drop in industry, the business profits were incredible largely due to government sponsors. This is a graph of the Dow Jones Industrial Index of the New York Stock Exchange. As can be seen in the graph, consumer sentiment is greatly impacted as the United States government decides to join World War I. This decision to join the war had immediate economic repercussions. Due to the government's need for money in order to finance the war, the budget deficit of the United States increased greatly. Many economists argue that such large amounts of deficit spending done by the government could have greatly increased the risk of hyperinflation. The drop in stock prices reflects investors' fears of high systemic risk within the U.S. economy. Despite these fears, although participation in World War I required extensive government deficit spending, the country's macroeconomic situation improved dramatically. The War Industries Board, established in July of 1917, strive to efficiently utilize the nation's industrial resources while still protecting its basic economic infrastructure. During the war, due to increased government spending and a large increase in demand for supplies, weaponry, food, and other materials, it resulted in increased productivity throughout the entire private sector, especially in the labor markets. This therefore helped expand the output of the United States. One way the industry was increased was the migration throughout the United States. The initial decline was caused by many of the workers heading off to war. This was counterbalanced by what became known as the Great Migration. This was when the African American and Mexicans moved from the south to the north to work in the factories. The Great Migration of Black Americans out of the south and into the north is one of the best known results of wartime migration. In the southern United States, Black Americans saw increased segregation and looked to urban life and the industrial economy in search for equal social and economic freedoms. Therefore, they joined the war effort in the industrial northern states. Some other reasons for the migration include the fall in common prices and various natural disasters. Mexican Americans also moved from rural to urban areas to work in industry. With all these new people working in the factories, the Nation War Labor Board was created to settle all the labor disputes. This board ruled over 1,000 cases. One of the main disputes of the labor workers was the 8-hour workday. It was decided that where the 8-hour day was the law, it would not be changed. But where it was not the law, it could be negotiated. The Nation War Labor Board also agreed on equal wages for women and an increase in the minimum wage. From this evidence, it is indicated that the United States during World War I truly fought an all-out total war when analyzing labor and economic implications. There are many elements of aggressive war deficit spending that some economists will argue greatly increased the output of the United States private sector. This in turn caused many minorities, such as Black Americans and Mexican Americans, to migrate to urban areas in search of employment. When America's pursuit for an isolationist foreign policy inherently failed, the government strived to effectively and efficiently redirect as many resources toward the war effort as possible, as can be seen by the government's relatively larger war.